see here, our second performer is a performance poet. Activist, feminist, making change for $100? I don't know. <laughs> She's a council person of Lima, so apparently if you need counsel, you can go to her too. <laughs> And she's Not also kind of indirectly Azra's <laughs> cousin, because her cousin is the mother of his niece. Please give it up for Carla Thompson! <laughs> So I guess me and Azra related, like, you know, black people are related. Kind of, yes. <laughs> My auntie's second cousin, Ray Ray, <laughs> made yeah. out with his Could mother, Pookie. Could you step Pookie. back two steps so they yeah, can yeah, yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more, a little more. That's good. Now, you're, now your hair's in, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All my hair ain't gonna get enough. Your, your hair is beautiful. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So this is lovely. Lovely air, lovely people. I would like to thank Michael Salinger and Sarah Holbrook for being here and for existing in this universe. Uh, I'm currently using one of your books, Sarah, to teach some fifth, sixth graders actually over in Lima. So. And can you speak Woo! a little louder so the last people back can hear you? Can y'all hear me? There we go. All right. Um, I only have a few pieces. Forgive me. Uh, am I allowed to cuss? Yes. Fuck yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> this one is entitled Therapy Session. I did not set out to do this. It was not part of my five or ten year plan, but my world is awfully white sometimes. Uncomfortable. It turns out people can say some pretty fucked up things when they consider you the safe one. Intelligent, well-spoken, light, bright, clean, kind, somehow different than the others. I find myself weary of frightened friends unable to communicate when other, darker people enter the room, building, block. I am tired of being so damn polite, politically correct enough to make them not worry about my love for them. The truth is, I didn't vote for him just because he's black. No one gave me a gift for doing it. I do happen to follow the news and the other guy was just an idiot. <laughs> truth is, I do not like calling anything not white, ethnic, or diverse, a deviation from the standard, exotic, or non-traditional. Truth is, I actually prefer my hair to theirs, and no, I don't think my butt's too big, and yes, <laughs> I'm ecstatic when my son dates a black girl. Truth is, being light makes me anything and everything but safe. Your jokes aren't funny. I don't understand how those other ones act, and no matter how down you think you are, how many black people you are friends with, have fucked over or fucked with, it is never, ever okay for you to say, nigger. Get over it. Truth is, I am tired of studying their canon, praising their God, practicing their politics. Truth is, I am sick of your fear. A loss of cultural status, a fumbling, ungraceful fall from the pinnacles of power. Truth is, the pundits are right. This isn't your grandfather's America. Truth is, we are more alike than unalike, and I do not have to worship you to love you. My white husband loves me even though I write poems like that. <laughs> he knew who he was marrying. <laughs> Probably because of it. <laughs> well, he's blind, but we haven't told him that I'm black yet. <laughs> don't, don't tell him. I'm just going to make a blind joke. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I guess I have an essay. Ooh, is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Um, it's uh, inspiration showcase, so if you feel inspired, it's yours. That's why I picked it, because I saw the little, that we had a theme, that we had a theme, and um, I am somebody who spent many years going to Planned Parenthood, because I could afford it, and they were wonderful, and then even after I got a real life job and had medical insurance, I still continued to go to Planned Parenthood, because they kept excellent records and took good care of me, mm -hmm. showed me respect. Um, so I was and asking you know, insurance money to keep going too, right? I was asked a little while ago to do um, a poem at a Planned Parenthood fundraiser, and I ended up writing an essay instead. <laughs> In this time of pro-life and pro-choice, I have decided to come out as pro-goddess. When I moved from Cleveland to Lima. I found that in my attic was my entire life in school records and personal journals starting from the second grade on up. 
I found a short essay that I wrote as part of an assignment at the beginning of the seventh grade. One of the questions I responded to was, is there currently anything that bothers you? My response, the feminist movement. <laughs> I was under the impression that women were taking it too far and that we needed to respect that there were differences between men and women and stop being so damn pushy. <laughs> I blacked out <laughs> from seeing that in my own handwriting. But when I recovered from reading that little treasure, I found my diary from the same year. In it, I was pleading with Jesus to forgive me for the masturbating that I had begun and planned on continuing, even though my mom said the Bible did not approve. My beliefs at the time had much to do with my mother. She was a beautiful, caring, God-fearing woman who took wonderful care of me and my brother, but she had forgotten herself for the sake of my father. Because of this, it took some time for me to learn the truth of me. So I ask you now, please, women, for the sake of your daughters, do not forget yourselves. We have held on to a God for so long, we let slip away the goddess. There simply is not one without the other, and woman, there is no life without us. More pointedly, there is no life unless we say so. This is not grandiose thinking, it is just the truth. This is not a hymn to sing to yourself to make you feel better after the procedure, it is truth. It is not an excuse or an apology, it is our truth, and we have forgotten our divine selves. So. Let me put it in terms that some men may understand. If I have a hammer, nails, and wood, am I obligated to build a house? Maybe not. But if I begin to tinker around with my tools and supplies, something might just get built. I may decide that after the frame is up, I don't want this house. I'm going to tear it down. That is okay. My tools, my supplies, my house, my decisions. Let's put it into terms that lawmakers can understand. You have the legislative power, tools, and enough of our tax dollars, supplies, to say build a comprehensive health care system that ensures no one is left ill due to an undeclared caste system. Are you obligated to end unnecessary sickness when you could just as easily feed the war machine with your money? Obviously not. But if you do attempt to pass some legislation, maybe you could strip it of all feminine care or fill it with so many restrictions and loopholes as to make it absurd. Your tools, your supplies, your laws. You can do what you want. But so can we. We can protest, we can vote, we can remember unapologetically that we are goddess, and we can teach our daughters, should we choose to have them, the same. Women, remember yourselves. You are creator. No dogma, no apologies, no shame, no approval needed. The truth is, life is our choice. The choice and its outcomes may be complicated, and it is not always easy, but that's okay. Being divine never was. This might just be my last piece. Is that okay? Do no! I need, do I need to read a lot? I don't want to read a lot. You, you can stop whatever you want to, but I don't want you to stop soon. <laughs> okay, so, um, Fu, I would like you, like you to move back and sit beside Katie. Um, I, I had talked to my new friend about doing a mommy piece, and um, I'm going to read a piece that I wrote about my birth mother who I lost a couple of years ago. Um, I met her when I was 19. Yeah. And uh, Katie is the only person here who has had the misfortune of meeting her in person. So uh, she might need a hug as we go through this. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was teaching some of my students in lockup how to, uh, just giving them ideas, frames for poems, and I, uh, told them about a list poem, and I thought, well, you know, Carla, you've never actually written a list poem, so here are seven things you don't do with your alcoholic mother. <laughs> One, you don't kick it with her. A bar or a club is a lit fuse in your hand, she will embarrass you. She will hit on your co-workers, your friends, your man. She started drinking right after she had to give you up, so she really never got any older than 16, and it shows. Don't worry. The nonstop flirting will eventually end. You can hold her hair while she vomits if she doesn't black out first. Two, you do not let her talk to your friends without bringing tissues. 
they will end up crying. Not out of sadness, but out of anger and frustration. On a Winefield ranch, she will find buttons they never knew they had and then push and stomp all over them. They will want to hit her, but they don't out of respect for you. You will become skilled at apologies. Three, do not expect her to hold a job. She will get several jobs because of her looks and charming first impressions. She will keep none of them for long. It will never be her fault. She gets fired because someone else was jealous or her boss was just a bitch. It has nothing to do ever with what they spilled on her breath or found in her bag. Four, don't tell her to choose between drinking and the grandkids. Don't tell her to choose between drinking and anything. If drinking is one of the options, it will always be the only option. She may love you. She definitely loves the grandchildren, but she needs vodka. Five, don't tell her to go to rehab. A is for quitters, and by God, she's no quitter. And the people there, they are so damn depressing. How can she stay sober around such miserable folks? She doesn't have problems like those people, and sadness is a feeling she doesn't want to have. No, she is smart. She drinks until she can't feel feelings anymore. Six, don't give her ultimatums you don't mean. She can stick to drinking longer than you can stick to ignoring her. If you tell her not to call until she is sober, that call might not come. Instead, you will get a call from your aunt after she is done identifying the body. It turns out drying out a severe drunk can kill them if they don't have the right help. And your mother was never good at getting the right help. You will be mad. There will be disbelief. You will wonder how you have so much love for such an embarrassment of a person. There will not be a funeral. You might have been the only person who would have gone. Seven. You don't ignore your connection to her. This dis-ease is most likely one of the few things you share. You realize how over the years, your weekend partying turned into daily nightcaps, turned into a fondness for country songs that coo over the pleasures of day drinking. You know what type of wine should accompany every type of meal. You can't imagine a vacation that doesn't involve a bar, and you surely couldn't unwind after a long day without a glass of something calming in your hand. After all, it is the nature of this beast to grow when fed. The elephant and the room started out as a teddy bear, but you are not your mother. I am not my mother. I am not, at least not yet.